Hi, welcome back to my kitchen. This week, I'm gonna show you how to make a classic nyonya dish. Last week, I've shown you how to make a nyonya dish as well, which was the vegetable curry. And I gave you a little bit of background on the nyonya food. If you missed that video, I have a link below the description or above on the top right of this video. Now this dish is another classic nyonya dish which I have learned from my mother. It's called gulai tumihu. Gulai tumihu is a Hokkien pronunciation which I'm saying right now because I'm a Hokkien from Penang, Malaysia. Gulai means curry, tumi means stir fry, and hu means fish. Chinese, as you know, love fish. This is a very good example of a nyonya dish because the Chinese nyonya borrow and learn how to make the spice paste from the Malay. I have my ingredients here, which I'm going to share with you now. Um, we will need quite a lot of uh, French shallots. Uh, French shallots is preferred compared to uh, the red onions uh, because it has a nicer flavor, it's sweeter and is not as strong as the red onions. We're gonna need some of the garlic, about six cloves, lemongrass, I'm using three stalks of lemongrass, dried chilies. Now the dried chilies, I'm using 10 of them. The dried chilies will need to be soaked in hot water, which I have already soaked over here. So I have dried chilies, 10 of them. Fresh red chilies. Now red chilies freeze very well in the freezer of your fridge. I've taken it out from my freezer. I'm using three fresh long red chili. This will give the vibrant red color to the curry sauce. Fresh turmeric, which I'm using about two. So you can get this at the Asian supermarket, frozen pack. To get that sourness in the curry sauce, we will need to use tamarind. It comes in a packet, in a block. So what I've done is I have taken a chunk of it and I've put it in a bowl and I soak it in hot water to extract the tamarind juice. And lastly, the ingredient that we need in this curry dish is toasted belacan. This is toasted belacan. I have shown you how to toast the belacan in my last video to make the vegetable curry. And I've toasted the whole block so I can freeze them in the freezer in an airtight container. I love Asian herbs, but there's one particular Asian herb that I love the most. It is used in most of Nyonya curry dish and also it is used by the Malay. It is not easy to find in a Western country, but I'm fortunate to find this here in Melbourne frozen pack. And it's called Torch Ginger Flower. In Malay, it's called Bunga Kantan. So I bought this frozen pack and I have it right here. It's a different type of ginger plant from the ginger that we use in our cooking. So this particular ginger bud flower is used for the nyonya cooking. I'll show you how to make use of this toss ginger flower in this fish curry dish. It is it gives the curry a completely different dimension altogether. What I'm gonna do next is to roughly chop all my ingredients so I can blend them into a smooth spiced paste. Cut the chili in half lengthwise and remove the seeds by using a spoon. With the Tosh ginger flour, I'm just gonna cut this and remove the stalk. And then the outer layer, I'm just gonna remove about two of the outer layer. You can see this is, the, this is how it looks. And cut it lengthwise in half okay I'm gonna do is to slice it 
very thinly. Next, the lemongrass. Remove the outer layer and then just basically roughly chop the lemongrass. We're only using the soft part of the lemongrass. Next, French shallots. Same thing, just roughly chop. Get the garlic next. I'm just gonna smash it with the knife to make it easy to remove the skin. With the turmeric, it's easier to peel the skin uh, when it's still frozen. If you can't find a fresh turmeric, you can always use the ground turmeric. Okay, all my preparation is done to make the spice paste. I need to blend all these ingredients. Once again, lemongrass, fresh red chili, French shallots, turmeric, garlic, dried red chilies which has been pre-soaked in water, toasted blachan. So these ingredients will be used to make the fish curry spice paste. I'm gonna use the electric blender to blend all my ingredients to get my spice paste for my fish curry. It is not a traditional way of doing it. If you want a traditional way, you will have to use a stone mortar and pestle and slowly pound each of these ingredients to get the consistency for the curry spice. Okay, so let's get started right now and just put all the ingredients into the blender and to blend into a smooth paste. Okay, it's not gonna fit everything in. Gonna have to put the remaining French shallots later. Gonna add the uh, dried chili. The next thing I'm gonna add some cooking oil. This will help the blades to run smoothly. Add the remaining French shallots. The last thing I'm going to add is the toasted blachan. So that's how the paste looks like, is the consistency that I'm looking for. I have added one cup of water in here and I mix through with, with the water so I can use it in my cooking. Now I have everything done over here. I have my blended spice paste, it's all done. I've got my tamarind juice. I've got my torch ginger flour sliced up. So the, what's missing here is the fish. I'm gonna remove it from my fridge. I bought, I bought this beautiful fish at the market today in South Melbourne market is a beautiful fillet um, it's barramundi fillet with the skin on it's really really lovely so I'm gonna use this in my curry dish the type of fish that you want to use in this gulai tomihu is a white fish traditionally back in Penang Malaysia we use the white palm fruit but it's not easy to find palm fruit in Australia, so I'm using barramundi fillet. Let's start cooking by first adding about one cup of cooking oil in the pan and turn up the heat to medium low. So the oil is warm enough, I'm going to start frying the spice paste. It looks like it's starting to dry up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the water that I have mixed in the container here earlier. I'm gonna lower the, uh, the heat down to, to a low heat because 
it looks like it's a little bit too hard so you really need to watch very carefully that you don't burn the spice paste and let it cook slowly now I'm gonna add the tamarind juice or the tamarind water this is so thick I'm gonna pour some water on top and to squeeze it through much easier if I use my hand so I have about another cup of water that I'm adding in you don't use coconut milk or coconut cream in this fish curry rather we use a tamarind to get the sourness of the gravy so that's that's the bit that we don't want to use now I'm gonna add the uh, tossed ginger flour this will give the curry sauce a nice aromatic fragrant season it with a bit of salt this curry is meant to be sweet so we're going to add more sugar add about two tablespoons of sugar I'm using brown sugar okay I'm gonna let it cook for another five minutes before I add the fish I'm going to have a quick taste to see if I need to add more sugar. It is sour enough but it lacks sweetness. So I'm going to add another tablespoon of brown sugar. This will help balance the sourness of curry sauce by adding more sugar. One more taste before I add the fish. That's about right. So what I'm going to do next is to add the fish. It's a barramundi fillet, it looks beautiful. So I'm gonna put the, uh, the flesh down first to let it cook. I'll turn the heat up a little bit. This barramundi fillet which I bought at the market this morning weighs about 450 gram. The fish is taking a little bit longer than I expected to cook. Uh, because of the size of the fish and the cut so I have to cover up with a lid to try and cook the fish it's been 10 minutes and it should be cooked by now as you can see the uh, the oil is starting to break from the gravy of the curry and this is really good because this is how long we need to cook is to make sure that the oil actually separate from the paste I'm just gonna toss it over and just to have a quick look to make sure that the fish is cooked oh yes I'm pretty sure it's cooked can test it up I just put the knife right through if it goes through easily yep it is cooked so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna remove the fish and plate the fish I'm going to add the gravy my sauce is a bit thick Then I'm going to garnish with a little bit more of the uh, tossed ginger flour. That's it, it's all done. A classic traditional Nyonia fish curry called Gulai Tumi Hu in my Hokkien Chinese dialect in Penang. The consistency I'm looking for is just right here I like the curry gravy to be thick which is what I've got and the color of the gravy to be yellowish orange from the turmeric is not as red as I wanted because I haven't used too much chili if you want your curry to be bright red you will need to use more of the fresh red chili I prefer mine to be more yellow, brown, orange and that comes from the turmeric, fresh turmeric itself. Um, it smells really nice, it's because it comes from the fragrance of the tossed ginger flower. Now you may not be able to find tossed ginger flower where you live. If you can't find it and if you don't have a tossed ginger flower, you can substitute with Vietnamese mint there's a good alternative to fragrant the curry itself and if you can't find Vietnamese mint you can always use just a normal mint 
I'm gonna have a taste of the fish right now. Well folks, that's the end of another week of my video and recipe. Subscribe and click the bell for notification. Share with your friends and families. I hope to see you next week. Thanks for watching. I'm Victor Koo.